4K Downloader is a simple solution for downloading high quality videos from YouTube and other social media platforms for use at a later date. You can download the smallest resolutions all the way up to the 4K resolution including 3D and 360 VR videos. Whether you want to download just the videos, an entire playlist or an entire channel, or if you would just like to do audio uh, MP3s, this program is the one for you. Try it now for free, or if you'd like to get the personal or the pro setup, click on the link down below and continue to support this channel. Hey there, and welcome to another Musicians React, and today we're checking out the Warning and Dust to dust uh yes the backdrop is finally back it's been over a year and a half since we did a music rep with this backdrop uh but it's back and in full force we are all mad here uh yes i'm wearing my dave does t-shirt that's because we also have the dave does channel if you haven't checked out the dave does channel please go over to the other channel details are in the description down below for lots of other reactions so if you want to find out about all the other reactions i've done to the entire uh, Queen of the Murder Scene album. I did that with a full review on the Dave Does channel. Now, so the question is, is then if I have done a full reaction to The Warning, why am I doing another reaction to Dust to Dust? Well, it was a sound check, and I really love looking at stuff like sound check. I love to see musicians where they're in different elements. I, I would love checking out things like in the studio work. Uh, they're some of my favorite videos to, to watch are where bands are in the studio working on albums. Uh, I like all the Metallica ones, like a year and a, a, year and a half, um, and all the other ones, including like some kind of monster. Anything like that where you're actually working through the technical aspects of a band working and sound check performances are really, really cool to check out. One, because you get to see them working on just how they interact with each other, how they put the music together, just how comfortable they are with the song. Sometimes they just kind of jam out new materials. They Sometimes they play around with it. Uh, and I wanted to check out this particular one. Now, I know, obviously, Dust to Dust is the prologue of the Queen of the Murder Scene. It was also the first song I ever heard of The Warning, so it was my introduction to the band. So I felt it was only appropriate with the relaunch of the Musician React channel that I checked this one out. Now there are, uh, what, six rules to the channel. They're going to come across the bottom of the screen, but basically no talking during the video, no pausing. You want to enjoy the video, I want to enjoy the video, and I'll give some feedback at the end. We'll try and break some of the bits down. I'll try and talk about some of the, maybe maybe some of the technical elements, if I know any of them. Uh, and we'll try and break down the track in a little bit more detail. But uh, let's get straight to this. Oh, if you want to support the channel, all the details are going to come on the screen. Also, if you, you can want to buy merch from the Dave Does merch store, that will be available in the links down below. Uh, but also on the main channel there, uh, Musician Reacts merch store is coming very soon. Let's do this. The warning, dust to dust. Count it in. This is sound check. Three, two, one.
It's not a day Dust to dust or burn the rest of me to start again Okay, so the warning dust to dust soundtrack, very cool, very uh, well played by the ladies. Now, uh, a couple of things to talk about. So, uh, a lot of you, I'm sure, will be uh, you, you are musicians or play music, uh, will know the difference between a line check and a sound check. Uh, now, it's great if you can get a sound check. So the sound check is where you get all your gear set up. Uh, they go through each instrument. So usually start with the drums, go through each instrument to make sure the uh, sound desk has got all of their levels. And then you go through each instrument. So guitars, bass, etc. Each of them given a clean tone and a distorted tone. Now the sound engineer uh, for a bigger band will have their own sound engineer that will come abroad. Uh, festivals may should have their own sound engineer uh, for each band depending on the size of the band but you may get a generic one for a smaller festival uh, and they will have a set list which will give you an idea of just how much is used in distortion how it's clean how much is backing because on this one uh, the pre-chorus has got a backing sample uh, which they had so when you first hear heard it on here it came through really loud and obviously he's just brought that down on the faders and they'll get markers put on the faders so they know where certain cues are with fits if anything needs to be brought up but they'll try to get an even mix um <clears throat> what the good what the band are basically then trying to do is they're just trying to find out what they want in their in-ear monitors um and basically after they've done a run through of a song so normally what you do is you get a full line check everyone gets all their lines checked make sure everything's level they'll run through a song the front of house will monitor that and try to get an even mix for out the front and then what they'll be looking to do is they'll be looking towards the individual band members for band members to be kind of go in. If you're playing, you might point to the guitarist and go guitarist monitor up or guitarist monitor down. And that way you're telling the sound engineer that you don't want as much of them in your mix because sometimes it can be overpowering. I've had it before where I've got the two guitarists and I can't hear the rhythm. I can only hear the lead and I'm like, I need to know the rhythm so I know where I can feel the changes if he's slightly off with me or not. So we can just kind of vibe or if there's an intro to a song and I can't hear him, very important that you have those balances. So usually at the end of the song, once they finish the soundcheck song, uh, the sound engineer will just then go around each individual member and kind of say, right, how's everyone's mixes? Do you need any more of anything, any less of anything? And then they might talk about a little bit, do that. And then they might try usually a snippet of another song just to make sure that the balance is right. And that will be it for the sound check. On a large bill, like a festival bill, you may find that one band sound checks and everyone else gets a line check because your equipment's gonna change. They, there's, there's no point sound checking every band. It's impossible. You've got so much equipment being swapped around. But general rule is on most bills, you will get a sound check, a full sound check for the uh, headliners. And then it works backwards uh, through the bill until you get to the first band on, we'll get the last sound check. In big festivals, you'll get a line check. Uh, and a line check is simply put, they've already got everything else set up from the uh, the main headline bands. You plug in and they go, check, everything. can you can you basically hear the guitar? Yep, right, you're ready to go. Problem with that is you don't get your balances. So usually the first song of a line check is always gonna be a little bit of a wishy-washy, uh, unless the engineer quickly reacts to it. But usually the first song you'll have a microphone that's not turned on for the backing vocalist because they didn't realize they needed a backing vocals on it, or it's too loud, too quiet. So it takes about a song for a line check to kind of even into a uh, mix, which is why uh, bands don't really like line checks. Um, and also you'd never get your monitors right. Every time I've ever done a line check, I can't hear someone. And unfortunately, there's very little you can do about it unless you can get the attention of the engineer and just sort of point to them, your monitors. As I was saying before, like guitarist, 
my area monitor up and then you might be able to get that corrected but a lot of the times in smaller gigs and stuff you'll be just having a monitor next to you rather than in ears unless you've brought your own uh what else uh apart from that very well played uh great to see them and again yeah you've got to remember these sometimes sound check can take you can, you might sound check four or five hours before you actually go on stage that's the worst part it's, it's sit the sitting around for four or five hours <laughs> Uh, and when I used to drink, uh, that was deadly. Being in a in a club somewhere like that, and you've been there, you got there at two o'clock in the afternoon, you've sound checked in at by three. Other bands are coming on. You're doing the headline at ten. O'clock, you're not going on till ten in the evening. You've now got from three o'clock till ten o'clock, so you've got seven whole hours. Yes, you go and grab a bite to eat, but you don't really want to. You can't really do much. You can't go home and relax. So you end up sitting in a bar. And as a person that used to drink a hell of a lot. Uh, yeah, there were a few times when I used to play pretty much absolutely pissed. Um, and they were not the best gigs I've ever done. So I I was always sometimes, always sometimes, a bit of contradiction in terms, but I used to like getting like the second band on slot because not opening, opening bands are always difficult. But if you can get the second band on slot on a bill, it was pretty good because you could go and have a couple of beers, go on stage, play it, and you can enjoy the rest of the evening just drinking and having, having a catching up with people and checking out the other bands and stuff so second band on was always cool headlining was good uh you got a much bigger set you used to get like up to an hour hour and a half playing so you used to get to play everything rather than the 30 minute sets that you got for an openings uh but yeah there was a lot of waiting around so uh, that's probably that's why they're obviously going to be quite casuals they don't want to be on their live performance gear they don't want to throw themselves out uh you've got the guy that's floating around on the stage he's the uh one of the roadies now he may be a festival roadie uh or he may be one of their specific roadies for individual items uh obviously came around when the sunglasses came down because you'd head bang too hard he came around took them off now, you might think that's a bit odd why would he do that he didn't want to put it back on it's easier to get rid of them and she doesn't want to fling her head forward to get rid of them because she might step on them or break them so easiest thing take them off for her so she can carry on doing what she needs to do uh but cool, really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed her checking out the warning again. Now there must be something new coming up fairly soon, so I definitely want to go and check out some more uh, newer material from the warning. So you need to let me know in the comments down below what else you want me to go check out. Obviously, on the Dave does, we've done all of the Queen of the Murder scene, um, and then we've done a Narcissista off the first album. So uh, please do let me know if there's something else you want me to check out under a musician reacts banner. But if you like this video, please do subscribe, click the bell icon, like and share, and that is of course how musician reacts.